Amen. Life is a fight. And the enemy doesn't take a break. Amen. The enemy keeps looking and digging and trying to. Yes, sir. I wish I had somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to talk long today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now I'm, something in me is just saying I need to say this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't have to fight. Yeah. We have to fight day and night. Yeah. But we're not fighting without hope. Yeah. Because my hope is built on nothing less yeah, yeah. than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Yeah. And I trust the sweetness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Holy. Hey. Yeah. 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 Holy Lee. Jesus name. Yes, sir. On Christ. The solid rock. Solid rock, I stand. Yeah. All other ground. Yeah. And look, I've tried other ground. I've tried. I tried different pathways. I've tried different philosophies, but it leads me back to the rock of my salvation. All other ground. Is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. As you turn with me to Hebrews, I'm just going to share with you because now I feel different now. In the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, I'm just going to read a few verses and then I'm going to sit down. 10 21. Hebrews 10. We're going to begin at verse, verse 21. One night while traveling home from Chicago, uh, me and uh, my dad got caught up in a, my family and my mom got caught up in a, a real storm. Yeah. And has anybody been caught up in a storm before? Yeah. Is there anybody in a storm right now? What's up? Yeah. Is there anybody that's fighting right now against the enemy? Yeah, let me just help you. You're trying to keep your mind straight. Yeah. Trying to keep food on the table. Yes, sir. Trying to keep the lights on. Maybe I haven't gotten down your street yet. Come on now. Maybe you're just trying to keep your children yeah. on the right track. Yeah. I don't know. That that's your street. No, that's not your street. Maybe just trying to keep your health yeah. together. Yeah. Maybe you're just trying to keep your family circle together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you, you turn around sometimes and you find yourself in a storm. You, you're on your way to the church house thinking you're going to praise God and you find yourself in a storm. You're on your way to the job to try to make that money and you find yourself in a storm. You, you're trying to help somebody else uh, and you find yourself in a storm. Yeah. 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 On the way home, we. Come on, real. Out in the middle of y'all know about the cornfields. Right in the middle of the cornfields in the middle of the night. There was nothing out there. We found ourselves in the in the midst of a terrible storm. And we stopped for a moment and under a vida. And I got a phone call and it was my dad. He said, uh, son, this is a pretty bad storm. I said, yeah, dad, what are we gonna do? He said, son, we can't stay here. We got to press on. Then he said, follow me. And we'll make it home. It's a profound statement. Yes, sir. Because life is always going to have its trials and tribulations. That's right. That's right. And if, if I may be so bold, you're going to have to go through some hell. Yes, sir. I don't know if there's anybody in here going through hell today. Yes, sir. But let me tell you something, just like I said, you're going through. You don't have to stay, stay there. Stay there, yeah, yeah. Go on through that hill. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah. And you make it on to the other side. We can't stay here. We can't stay here. We must press on. We must press on. 
the preacher of Hebrews said it like this. He says, and having a high priest yeah. over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart yeah. in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an evil conscience and, and our bodies washed with pure water. Right. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Yeah. For he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is. But exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Verse 23. Let us hold fast. Somebody say hold fast. Hold fast. The profession of our faith without wavering. I want to talk to you just on the brief subject for the next just six or seven minutes on the brief subject of hold fast but press on. Hold fast. But press on. Yeah. Let us pray, our Father and our God. We thank you for your spirit in this place. We thank you, Father God. This is your church. These are your people. Father, we pray thee now that you speak to your people. Yeah. Let them know that uh, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Trials may come and storms, winds are, are going to blow. But you're still sitting on the throne this morning. So that we can declare everything is going to be all right. Yeah. I know, we know what the doctors had to say. But thank God that you're a specialist in every situation. Thank you, Father God. And come now, let your spirit uh, drench us with your grace and your mercy today. Speak to your children. For we need to hear a word from you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hold on. Hold fast. But press on. Here, uh, as you biblical scholars would know, here the preacher of the book of Hebrews. Some believe that it is Paul, but it is not clear who the writer is. I dare say today, and I don't really care who wrote it. I'm just glad that it was written. Because it was written to the Christians, uh, at that time, the Jewish Christians at Jerusalem. But today, it is written to everybody, the Christians at South Park, and the Christians at Liberty, and the Christians at Tr Trinity, and Tabernacle, and the Christians all over the land. It is written to all of those uh, who are going through something. And I dare say today, I want to just be real. And I know we just got through singing and we got through shouting and we got through clapping our hands. But I want to be real about it today. Somebody is in the midst of trouble right now. Somebody is dealing with something right now. Somebody is trying to make their way through storm winds and hell and high waters right now. We can still lift our hands, but there's still trouble in our midst. We can still clap our hands, uh, but we know there's sickness among us. We can still say amen, uh, but we know that trouble is just around the corner. But thanks be to God uh, that we are not alone, uh, that we can hold fast uh, to the profession of our faith. The preacher of Hebrews is trying to, uh, to encourage uh, the Christians today because uh, at that time the church was being persecuted. Yeah, it was under attack. It was, uh, folks, uh, uh, the world had decided that they were going to attack uh, uh, the church. And because of the attack and because uh, of a weak constitution and a wavering uh, faith, uh, some uh, had decided to walk away from the church. Uh, some had decided that they didn't want to be a part of the missionary club. Some had decided that they didn't want to be a part of the choir. Some had decided 
they didn't want to be a part of the uh, missionary or the deacon board. And they decided because the pressure was so great that they would walk away from the church. Oh, what? The preacher of Hebrews uh, decided to call a worship service and write a letter so that he could encourage uh, those Christians uh, to press on, to hold on to their faith, but press on. And I come to tell you today that I've had to hold with a death grip onto my faith, uh, walking into hospitals and walking into funeral homes. I, I've had to hold on to my faith uh, when I turn on the TV in the morning and see uh, uh, how you have uh, uh, a parents of soccer players who were running their car into families and killing them. I had to hold on to my faith when I hear stories about uh, ex-cops coming in and shooting people in their own house. I, I had to hold on to my faith uh, when I hear about the children uh, who are uh, uh, gone along the wayside. I had to hold on to my faith. Uh, Sometimes even walking into the church uh, and there's confusion, I have to hold on to my faith. Amen. Because life is a battle. There's a time. I was on the telephone with the senator this week and I told her I need I need your help. And I said that they just won't leave us alone. And the senator said, that's all right, Reverend, we're gonna be with you. I got on my knees and I started to pray and things. I don't know about you. I don't, you know, y'all don't have to say amen today and preach it to myself. But sometimes I have to get on my knees with tears in my eyes asking the Lord please open the door asking the Lord please to heal asking the Lord please to deliver asking the Lord please protect my children as they go along asking the Lord please protect my family bless my pastor bless my daddy bless everybody that's yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. I'm just trying to be real with you today. Yeah. Uh, when I lost my mother, I just didn't know what to do. Yeah, you didn't. I was all twisted and turned around. Yeah, you were. But the Lord sent some folks in my life to speak a word of encouragement, uh, to speak their testimony. Uh, somebody said, You will get through this. Uh, and somebody said, I'll keep you lifted. I'll keep you in prayer. Yeah. And that's why. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm here today. Yeah. I'm standing today yeah. because we have been called to press on. Yeah. Hold on to our faith, but we have to press on. We have to move forward, but we need to move forward together. The preacher of Hebrews sent this word. Listen, you don't have to worry. Look, God has already done all of the work for us. He said that he sent his son down here. Uh, that uh, uh, he died for our sins. Now, now, now get this. It says that uh, uh, now we have access uh, uh, because uh, the, 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 the veil uh, in the temple was rent in two. Uh, meaning that now we have access to the holy of holies for ourselves. Somebody's looking at me like they don't understand. Let me, you don't have to wait for me to talk to God. You don't have to wait for the deacons to assemble uh, to step into the sanctuary and lift your hands in praise. You don't have to wait for the missionary. You can go to God in prayer for yourself. I don't have to wait for the priest. I don't have to wait. I don't have to have anybody interpret because uh, the uh, spirit uh, it, it interprets every groan uh, that I utter, every uh, noise that I make. Uh, even when I can't, uh, because of the pain and the pressure, even because I can't uh, articulate what I'm going through, when I just do, mm, the spirit knows what I'm going through and is able to interpret that to God himself. Oh yeah. 
So don't ever think. Uh, don't ever think that, the, that God doesn't know what you're going through. He always knows. He sees and he knows what you're going through. And because I can go, I can go to God in prayer for myself. I can talk to him by myself. I, I don't need anybody. I don't need any help. I don't need, uh, my, I heard my grandfather say he didn't need a degree, uh, uh, a PhD in theology. He didn't need uh, uh, to go and study uh, with all the great philosophers. Uh, he just came into uh, the temple and kneeled at the altar and said, oh, Lord. You know uh, what I'm going through. Oh, Lord, you know what I'm facing. Oh, Lord, you know what I'm up against. And he knows what you're going through. Here, uh, the preacher of the Hebrews comes uh, forward and he says, listen, uh, because uh, he shed his blood, the, 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 the veil in the temple was rent in two. Now, verse 20, it says that now because uh, uh, that pathway has been cleared, now uh, you have a new way uh, that you can travel. Yeah. Have you ever uh, gone down a road and you find that it's a dead end? Yeah. Yeah. I've come to tell you today, God can change that dead end into an expressway. God can turn that thing around. Has anybody ever been lost before? Or am I just by myself today? Yeah. Has everybody been lost before? Listen, yeah, we, yeah, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And it was because of God's grace. He's given us a new way uh, uh, to go. Verse 21, now, he says, uh, now, he, we have a high priest that is in the temple. That means we got a pastor that's in the temple. Pastor beyond me, I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about the, the high priest uh, that is here, that is to uh, direct us and to guide us uh, along the way. He is in place right now. Now, the Hebrews, the, the preacher says, now let us draw near unto him. Yeah, so uh, some of us have come here because of position. Some of us have come here because of status. But I've come here today to draw near to God. I didn't come here for the music. I didn't come here for the celebration. I did not come here to see uh, uh, everyone. I, I didn't come here so you can see me in this robe. And this robe don't mean nothing. Because see, without this robe, I'm still a preacher. Without this. Without that, I, I'm, I'm still a preacher. Uh, uh, without standing here, I, I don't need to stand here to preach God's gospel. I, I don't need to. I don't need these lights on me uh, to proclaim the goodness of the Lord uh, in the land uh, of the living. Uh, I don't need uh, uh, anybody to say amen or clap or look at me. Uh, I'm going to preach uh, while uh, it is yet day because uh, the night is coming. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Where no man can work. Come on, man. Yes, sir. We need to stop the uh, fighting amongst ourselves and we need to come together as one community of faith. Because God has some work for us to do. He didn't call us to just pray and to sing in between these four walls. Yeah. But we need to be reaching out to somebody. Yeah. I, want, I want to know. Does somebody know that you're a Christian? Does your friends know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, would you I just entertain me for a minute? Does your friends know? That you come here every Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Does your, does your supervisor know yeah, yeah. that you believe in God? Yeah. I know you can't say it. Some places you can't even say it. Now, when I've come to tell you, I'm going to tell everybody, that, get by me. That's all right. If yeah. you want to find me, find me. But I'm not going to tell him wherever I go. Because God has been too good to me. Can't deny him. And I wish there was one 
one, two, three of y'all would just proclaim his goodness today. I wish there was somebody that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wish there was somebody in the midst that is not scared to raise your hand and tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. I'm talking about down downtown. I'm talking about at the subway. I'm talking about down on 39th Street. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if it was not for the Lord, I don't know where I would be. There's somebody here that still would be drinking out and living in the bottom of the barrel. So there's somebody in here that still would be vaping or shooting up their arm. There's still somebody else in here uh, that would still be drinking on the corner. There's somebody in here that might have been on, on, and living on the lower whack of drive. But I've come to tell you that Jesus has been the difference in my life. I, I'm not uh, so good. I'm not so great. Uh, I'm not a great, a, a great profound preacher. All I know is I'm just going to give it yeah. all I got yeah. while I still have an opportunity yeah. Yeah. to praise the Lord. That's right. That's up. I need. Yeah. I learned a long time ago. Right Nobody can beat me at being crazy with wings. <laughs> Nobody can beat me and preaching like him and talking and walking like him. Uh, uh, listen, you do uh, the best you can. I've learned this a long time ago. You do the best you can with what God has blessed you with. Don't take your talent. I, I, I'm deviating. Give me a minute. Don't take your talent and bury it in the sand because somebody has stepped on your toe. Yeah. Your church needs you. Yeah. God is expecting more from us. Yes, sir. God is expecting us to be, uh, 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 and expecting us uh, uh, to reach out and touch somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask somebody some, a question in here. Were you a blessing to somebody this week? Yes, sir. Were, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I just, did you bless somebody when you walked in the door today? Did you bless, did you, did you, look, did you try to uplift somebody? That's what the Hebrews, that's what the preacher is talking about. Did you try to uplift somebody or did you try to tear them down? On, did man. you try to talk about them? Yeah. Did you try to ridicule yeah. them? Yeah, come on, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you. When you come in into the house of the Lord, you should be expecting an encounter with Jesus Christ himself. And if you did not come here, you're wasting your time. If you did not come here to see Jesus, then you're wasting your time. I came here come on, man. so the spirit can uplift me. I came here so that my brothers and my sisters could encourage me. I've come here to him to sing the songs of Zion. I've come here today uh, to shout amen, but I've also come uh, uh, to encourage somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I've also come uh, to tell you, Sister Cash, you can make it. Uh, it's, I know it's tough, but you, you can make it. Uh, I've come to tell someone, Sister Sims, I told you he's going to come through. Uh, he's here today. Uh, I've come to tell somebody yeah. everything that's going to be. All right, yes, sir. That's why we come together. That's right. And I know that there's an any church movement out there that says, oh, the scripture doesn't say that we all to come, even though it says right here, we all not to forsake the assembly. But they say, oh, you don't have to go. We can meet at Starbucks. We we can we can meet in the, yeah, you can meet at Starbucks, but if there's 20 Christians over in the church house yeah. and there's only two Christians over at the Starbucks, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord with my brothers and my sisters. Let me tell you something. This anti-church movement. Let me ask them a question today. Come on now. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We can meet in Starbucks. I'm not mad about that. We yes, can sir. do that. Yes, we can meet over in, in, in uh, at the coffee shop or wherever and yes, praise sir. God. Yes, I ain't mad about that. I'll meet you over there. Yes, sir. Uh, but if you're sick, you can meet in the, co the, the uh, coffee shop too. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want to meet there. You want to go to the emergency room. Come on, Ray. I'm telling 
I want to tell somebody on, something. Sir. This on, is man. the emergency yeah. room on, for the Christian. Yeah. This is. Yeah. I wish on, I had somebody in here. Don't yeah. have a church in here yeah. that's going to pray with me for just a little while. I, I, this is where. This is the place uh, that I come when my soul aches. This is the place uh, that I come when the doctors don't know what to do. This is the place uh, that I come uh, when I need my spirits lifted up. Uh, I don't want to go to Starbucks. Uh, I want to be where the Lord is. Come on, Red. Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on, Red. Yeah. That's right. He says first, draw near unto the high priest. That's right. Verse 23 says you got to hold on to your faith. You got to hold fast. And I know there's some folks that, that you're dealing with some stuff. I know some of the stories. I, I know what you're going through. I know, I know, I know. Uh, and, and some people don't even realize uh, because you put on a good front uh, and tell everybody everything's all right. But I know uh, when you get home uh, in those four walls you call home, uh, um, that tears begin to, to fall down. Uh, there's somebody here uh, that's facing something uh, and they don't know which way to turn uh, and they don't know how to get out of it. Uh, all I can tell you to do is turn to the Lord. Turn to the God of your salvation. Because I've come to tell you when he stepped out of the grave he declared that he had all power in his hand. And he has that power it's the heal and that power is to set free and that power is to deliver and that power is to make right and that power is to take any crooked way and make it straight and that power is to uplift that power is what woke us up this morning that power is what put food on our table that power is what keeps us day by day First, draw me. Second, hold on to your faith. Yeah. Sometimes all you got is your faith. I gotta say just a little bit more about it. All you got is your faith. When the doctor comes in and gives you that that news, all you have is that faith. Yeah. When they get that phone call about your child. All you got is your faith. Yeah. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, you don't have money uh, to make it from uh, paycheck to paycheck. And I want to tell somebody, I'm like that today. I'm trying to make it from paycheck to paycheck. But I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Because he makes the difference up every single time I come up short. I wish I had somebody in here. Have you ever come up short? But the Lord is like, come on in here. Have you ever come up uh, and you were a little short? Uh, the Lord would just pull you on through. <laughs> when you think you can't cross that finish line, uh, the Lord just picks you up by the arms. Come on, son. <laughs> you can make it across the finish line because you believe. Uh, all you got is your faith. Well, I'm on. Let me just be real. Sometimes family does not understand. Friends don't even know, can't even answer the question. Now, money is only going to help a little way. A little bit. But it's got to be a little bit more than that. It is my faith and my understanding that if I fall along the way, that my God will see me from heaven and he will reach down and put me back on my feet again. I want to ask somebody something in here. Have you ever stumbled along the way? Have you ever fallen and you felt like I can't get up? Yeah. Yeah. You, and maybe you just got to be over 50. Maybe you got to be over 40. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when your legs can sustain you and you have fallen and everything you try is like a spiritual quicksand. And the more you move, the quicker you sink. The more you try to reach out, the, the quicker you begin to sink. And the more you try to struggle, you still begin to sink. Uh, but listen, let me tell you, stop moving, stop shaking, yeah. and just call on the name yeah. of Jesus. Uh, I tell you, yeah. if you call on his holy name, yeah. I tell you, he'll answer yeah. by and by. Yeah. By and by, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher. 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 Somebody 
Bible say yes he will. Yes he will. Yes sir. Yes he will. Yes he will. I wish I had somebody yeah. that said, just want two people that say he did yes, it for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, he did it for me. He lifted me yes, from the waters. He lifted me up from sinking sand. He delivered me when I didn't have no way out. It seemed like that the Lord had one more move. The Lord had one more way. The Lord will. I just learned to just say this in the midst of my midnight madness. I've learned to just say that the Lord will make a way somehow. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to open the door. I don't know how he's going to make a way. All I know, my faith tells me he'll make a way somehow. Said first to draw me. You need to be coming into his presence. Even if you can't get here, you can still get to his presence. I let somebody know that. When you get up, uh, you roll out of bed, you can step into his presence. And before you jump in the shower, you can step into his presence. When you get in your car on 88 going to Wheaton College, Listen, I've had to roll into his presence. Yeah. Uh, and when I walk into South Park, I want to enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I want to step into his presence because there's no other place I'd rather be. And I'm going to tell you, when you're in the spirit of God, I'm just throwing this in right now. When you're in the spirit of God, you feel like you can handle anything. I wish I had it. When you step into his presence, you, you, don't, you don't care what the enemy has on you. The, it's like it bounces. You feel like Superman. Just, it, just, just the trouble, the criticism just bounces off you. Just, uh, just the backbiting just kind of just bounces off you. Uh, now, anything uh, that, that comes against you just seems like it just bounces away uh, when you're in his presence. That's right. Right. Hold on to your faith. And then it says, and this is the most important thing that we need to talk about today. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Does your presence does your presence cause confusion? Does your presence cause 